Hello, guys and gals, and welcome uh, to Druid, I Choose You. Uh, that's right. I want to be the very best Druid there ever was. To control nature is my test. To protect it is my cause. Uh, I will train all the wolves and master the elements. I'm shape-shifting into hairy forms no man has ever seen. Ah, that's right. We are going to be talking about the Druid today as a starter class. What kind of starter class is the Druid? What kind of class is the Druid? Do you want to even pick the Druid? Probably, to be honest with you. The Druid's one of the more powerful and more vers versatile characters. And quite honestly, just getting absolutely insane in terms of tankiness. Let's talk about the druid here real quick, and I totally logged in. Thought I logged into the wrong character the wrong quote for a second there, because there was a rogue right in front of me. <laughs> so the druid is one of these characters that just has like everything. Like when I mean everything, I mean like like you know barbarians are melee classes, you know, and like and like the necromancer's like a caster class with like minions, and like the sorcerer's like a caster class specifically. No, 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 no. The druid's like everything. Like the druid is literally like a weir bear. All right, he's a weir wolf. Both melee, by the way. But you can have like a ranged weir bear and a ranged werewolf, and that doesn't make no sense. And then you also got storms and attacks, and you also got earth attacks. And, uh, and on top of this, we've also got tons of different ways that you can combine all these together so that you can literally make, like, casters, melee characters, melee casters, casters that use minions. There are some pretty cool options as far as companions go. The freaking Poison Creeper is, like, dumb, stupid, broken, especially early game. And quite honestly, I would definitely recommend that if you start with a Necro... Oh, sorry, Necromancer. If you start with a Druid... Uh, you definitely start with Poison Creeper because Poison Creeper is just really good. Um, not only does it poison everything around you, not only does it give you a 20% crit bonus, not only does it um, freaking just, just, just dumb, stupid, amazing, slow everything around you as long as you grab the Neurotoxin passive, but just in general, it's like just a really awesome ability in general. Um, Ravens also, too, because it has this really nice vulnerable for three seconds every single time you cast ravens on stuff and you can cast it all the time and on top of this to make matters even worse as far as like how amazing they are is this passive which literally lets you reset your freaking companions on a regular base as long as you hit a critical strike so like you get a lucky hit critical strike chances have a 20 percent chance to reset the cooldowns of your companion skills which means you get to spam them all the time which is absolutely glorious um all in all whether you want to be a werewolf whether you want to be a were bear, whether you want to be a storm druid, whether you want to be a earth druid, whether you want to be a storm werewolf, whether you want to be a earth were bear, whether you want to be a friggin' like it just doesn't it does there's like there's like no limit to the number of different builds you can do in this particular character, including storm, stormlight, uh, freaking earth. You can do storm earth as well, and um, it's just absolutely amazing in my opinion as far as a starter character goes. Now, what are the two best like early level? builds for the druid I actually have that on a notepad here so the druid is actually uh, really good with companion uh tornado is a pretty good early build pulverize and shred these are all pretty decent as far as starter builds go and um just not bad at all as far as uh, a character for a starter character i don't think you're gonna have any problem whatsoever doing a starter character druid i will say this however some of the end game items that you need for like some of the builds like Tempest Roar tend to be pretty rare for some reason. Some people find them really quickly, and other people like get to like level 100 before they find them. So I wouldn't necessarily build your character specifically around Tempest Roar. Um, but in general, there's a lot of cool things going on. Like, for instance, there's a new aspect that's coming out um, that was actually leaked during the dev, dev conference, which is basically a, um, a passive that makes it so that Landslide is cast around Poison Creeper whenever you use it, which is sounds honestly pretty freaking awesome in my opinion. Um, and it also increases the damage of your Earth skills by 10%. Uh, so we're going to have to see how good that is, because that looks absolutely amazing. Um trying to think how else I can explain just how amazing the druid is in terms of how he does things. First off, you basically have like an eminently spammable barrier, which 
I mean, literally, you can just spam it all the time. It has a 16-second cooldown, but there's even ways where you can reset it. Um, you can also set it up so that it grants you Fortify, or you can set it up the other way so that it has a damaging effect where it bounces outward from you as you're spamming it. Um, you have more defensive cooldowns, though, like Cyclone Armor, which actually can be modified to affect everyone in your group and also affect physical damage reduction. Um, Blood Howl, which again can be augmented to affect everyone in your group and can also give you a pretty nice attack speed bonus of 15%, or you can set it up so it generates you spirit. Uh, debilitating Roar is another defensive cooldown, which gives a pretty hefty 70% reduction to damage dealt by nearby monsters, which is pretty awesome, and can also fortify you for a pretty nice amount of, uh, of, of freaking fortification. So not only do you have multiple options when it comes to barriers, but you also have multiple options when it comes to healing and also fortification in multiple different ways, which allows you to basically fortify and barrier up like all the time. Um, on top of this, there's also tons of different options for defensive mechanics, even past that, like Hurricane has a 20% damage reduction uh, whenever enemies are affected by that. Um, the Storm build has tons of crazy passives, like the ability to just have free lightning bolts rain down on enemies that are immobilized, um, as well as uh, lightning attacks that just happen on like an interval constantly, um, and the ability to create vulnerability with Storm skills. The Druid definitely is one of the classes that has basically no issues creating vulnerabilities. Stormstrike can create vulnerability at a 15% chance uh, for 3 seconds. You can get vulnerability from the Ravens, which is really nice for uh, 3 seconds, and you can cast that directly on a target, and it hits everything within Radius and makes them all vulnerable for 3 seconds, which is really nice. Um, you can also utilize the... Um, uh, the storm skill passive, which can get you vulnerables that way. Um, and quite honestly, there's a lot of ways that you can make vulnerable in, on the druid build. Um, as far as the ultimates go, um, Cataclysm is kind of weird. I'm not really 100% sure on this one yet. I've used it a couple times, and I'm, I'm not really 100% sure how much I like it. It's kind of random. Um, Petrify also feels kind of not as great. I'm not really 100% sold on this one either. Um, it's basically just kind of like an AoE stun for the most part. Um, although it does have this very nice um, uh, against bosses, the critical strike damage bonus is increased by 50%, 50 which is a multiplier. Um, and the duration is increased by 6 seconds. So Petrify is kind of nice against bosses because it gives you a huge amount of damage. But I never really have much issues with bosses anyway. So uh, I don't know. It's basically really just for that critical strike damage bonus, but it's a really short duration. So you're going to have to time your ability as well. Um, Lacerate is also a little strange. I wasn't, like, particularly impressed with this one. And um, it can be used as a heal, um, and it can also um, guarantee a critical strike and give you a huge uh, damage bonus. So, it you know, it'll do a decent amount of damage on that first hit because of Supreme Lacerate. Um, I personally prefer not to take an ultimate on my druid, which is a little strange, I know, but I, I just really like all the other abilities that I can get access to. Um, this one is also probably one of the best ones, which is Grizzly Rage, which basically lets you turn into a giant, big, mean grizzly bear, and you run around murdering everything, and you can you can extend the duration uh, a lot, and you can also reduce the cooldown a lot, and by the time you're done, you can almost have like permanent uptime on Grizzly Rage. There's also an aspect that literally lets you turn this into were Werewolf Rage, and changes the way the ability works, which is also pretty cool if you want to do like a werewolf build. Taking a look at the key stat, keystone ta passives, key passives, there's definitely some options in here. There's a uh, werebear one specifically, which is Ursine Strength. Um, there is a one where you basically are constantly transforming back and forth between the werebear and the werewolf um, abilities, and it gets you bonuses that last for about 15 seconds. So you're basically just constantly going back and forth between them and getting the bonuses of both. Um, Lupine Ferocity is pretty nice too because it basically guarantees you get a crit and also deals 70% increased critical strike damage. Um, so, you, the, you know, you've got like a, wolf, a bear bear, a wolf, and then a, a combination. Um, and then up here we've got Earth and Might, which is really good for the Earth Druid. Uh, we've got a Nature's Fury ability, which is one where you're switching back and forth between Earth and Storm skills constantly. And then we also have the Perfect Storm, which is set up specifically for those Storm Druids. And in general, like you can just see, there's six different builds right here. 
but that's not all the builds there are in this. The, the druid is crazy. Like, you can literally, like, take a storm skill and turn it into a werewolf skill. You can take, like, a werewolf skill and turn it into something else. You can take bear skills and turn them into earth skills. And you can take earth skills and turn them into bear skills. And, and like, by the time you're done messing around with the way the skills work, like, the entire skill tree changes. Like, just in the blink of an eye, just for putting on specific items here and there. Which allow you to utilize effects. Um, like for instance, I'm utilizing, um, debilitating roar. It's now a werewolf skill. In addition, debilitating roar will immobilize poisoned enemies, right? Or, um, I'm also utilizing the, uh, nature's fury, which is, or nature's savagery, which is werewolf skills function as storm skills and werebear skills function as earth skills for nature's fury key passive. Um, and this is the kind of silly stuff that goes on with this kind of thing is that you can definitely get, a lot of crazy effects when it comes to like setting up your character whether you're using uh, tempest roar which allows you to use your base storm skills as werewolf skills or whether you're using something like the dark howl which lets you use debilitating roar as a werewolf skill um, there are tons of different ways that you can potentially get access to a skill in a way that will allow you to utilize other effects like, for instance, when I make debilitating roar into a werewolf skill, now it is able to use my werewolf passives like toxic claws and venom and things like that. And, uh, and it has the ability to gain damage buffs and other things that I have applied to the werewolf abilities. Same thing goes for when you turn, like, a werewolf ability into a storm ability or a earth skill into a werebear skill and things like that. You can apply the subsequent passives and things from that tree into the other tree. Um, like, for instance, right here, there's a 3% damage reduction while in werebear form. So if I could turn my earth skill into a werebear skill, then I'm going to get the damage reduction while I'm using the earth skill, which is kind of nuts. Um, the Paragon board on the Druid is also pretty interesting, and quite honestly, there's a lot of little fun things that you can get in here. Like, for instance, the Critical Strikes of Werewolf Skills Restore to Spirit. Um, you also have things like the, uh, while there are three or more poisoned enemies near you, you get 45% increased damage. Um, and overall, I think in, in this character is just kind of crazy in the amount of customizability you can do. Um, on top of this, you also have access to boons, spirit boons. Now, the spirit boons might not seem like a lot at first, but quite honestly, they're pretty massive. Depending on what you're trying to do, whether you're trying to reduce damage reduction uh, from elites, whether you're trying to reset your um, companions with the pack leader ability, whether you want to generate fortify every single time you use a defensive skill, um, whether you want to extend the duration of your ultimate skills, or whether you want to uh, have a lucky hit that gives you a 50% chance to restore 10 spirit. Um, there's also uh, critical strikes with shape-shifting skills heal you for 3% of your life. Um, dealing lightning damage up to 20% chance to cause a target to emit a static discharge, dealing uh, lightning damage to all surrounding enemies. I mean, there's tons and tons and tons of really cool stuff that you can get in here. And uh, quite honestly, it just really seems like this character is one of the most customizable characters, I think, in the game, bar none. Um, now, what kind of endgame builds can you potentially make with the Druid um, once you've gotten past your early starter level stuff, which is usually, you know, as I pointed out earlier, Companion, Tornado, Pulverize, and Shred. Um, once you've gotten past your leveling setup, you're going to be looking at some endgame builds, and I got those here too, uh, which is Lightning Storm. Lightning Storm is a very powerful one. I've seen a lot of really good Lightning Storm uh, Druids. Werewolf Shred Druid is pretty powerful. Um, I've actually built a Shred Druid myself. Tornado Werewolf Druid, that one's pretty cool. There's also an Earthen Bulwark setup where you're basically just detonating Earthen Bulwark all the time, which is right here. So you're basically just getting tons and tons of Earthen Bulwark detonations, which does tons of damage to all the enemies around you. Um, you can also shapeshift back and forth between two different builds. So, like, if you're doing Werewolf and Bear, that's a pretty common one as well. And uh, Nature's Fury is a pretty powerful one, switching back and forth between Earth and Storm skills. Um, in general, I think you'll find that a lot of these uh, builds are kind of intricate. Um, and, uh, and, and they, honestly, they're pretty darn cool. Like, I... I've had a lot of fun um, playing around with the Druid so far. I think I've made several different Druids, including an Earth Druid, a Storm Druid, a Werewolf Druid. I have not made a Werebear Druid yet, but maybe that'll change for Season 1. Because I am considering, and this is, the, this is my admission, 
I'm considering making a druid this season. There's um there's some pretty interesting ways that you can make some druids when it comes to the um, companion skills. And with that new aspect that allows you to cast landslide around you in a circle when you use your um your poison creeper. And I'm actually kind of uh, interested to see how maybe I could work that into an actual build. Maybe that might be my starter character for this season. Um, anything else I can talk about with the druid? Oh, uh, there is a big downside to the druid. And hear me out. This is you don't know, don't hate me on this. The druid and transmogs look ugly. <laughs> Oh man, they just look so bad. Like I don't, everything looks like, like, I don't like some garbage he found on the side of the road or something. Like I don't get it. Like I mean, I get he's in the nature and all that, but like, does it? Does he have to have like a dead possum like glued to the back of his butt? Like I, I swear, there's one of them in here. It literally, he's got like a dead possum, like glued to the back of his butt. And and it just. I'm not really all that impressed with the druid cosmetics. I'm I'm not too impressed um, overall. I feel like the druid cosmetics are a little too. I don't even know. They don't even look tribal. Like I I think that's one of the biggest issues is that like they don't even they don't even look tribal. They just look weird. Um, and some of the, some of the helmet options are just absolutely crazy looking. Like, I mean, uh, yeah. Okay. All right. Mm-hmm. 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 I mean, this one kind of reminds me of Goku a little bit. I mean, it's a little silly looking, but at least it kind of looks like something. Um, now, when it comes to the druid uh, specifically, um, you may want to... Pick the male druid. Um, the, the female druid looks really bad in this game. <laughs> I mean, go play around with the options just for lulls, but... Um, yeah. Um, all in all, I do think the druid is a very powerful starter class for Diablo 4. I think that as far as versatility goes, there is something there for everybody. Whether you like melee, whether you like caster, whether you like something in between, whether you want a a shape shifted class, whether you want to be a werewolf or a werebear, or you where you want to be a storm wolf or an earth bear or like anything in between, there are tons of different ways that you can develop your druid into a character that fits more your specific style. And I think that's one of the biggest strengths of the druid is that you really just kind of have like whatever you want to do like whatever you want to play around with like it's really actually pretty easy to make a really cool druid um and once you get into the late game you start to realize the druid is just a tanky beast and just yeah just a very tanky beast a very fun beast anyway as always i do appreciate you guys and gals watching my videos even when i'm just talking about season starter pokemon picks and uh, as always keep watching